Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Assimilate Inc. and I'm back again with another Learn Scratch tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to talk a little bit more about the timeline, but more specifically about the viewport. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about two tools that you have at your disposal to take a look and compare shots, whether they're in your timeline, whether they're versions, or whether they're two completely different shots altogether. And those two tools are the toggle dual view mode as well as the toggle over mode. So in this lesson, I'm going to show you what the difference is between these two tools and why they're going to be essential to your Scratch workflow. All right, so as you can see, we are in Scratch. I am on the construct module. And as you can see with the second shot in slot one, we have two versions. Well, it's technically three versions. It's our standard shot plus two versions that I have created, just very extreme versions of the same shot just so it's easy to tell them apart. Now, what I'm gonna do is head on over to the edit module and where we're heading for this lesson is right down here at the bottom of the viewer. We're gonna take a look at the toggle over mode, which you can see the shortcut is S or shift and S on the keyboard. And then right beside it is the toggle dual view mode that we're gonna look at in just a little bit. Now, let's head right back over to toggle over mode. I'm going to turn it on and you're gonna notice that nothing really happens but we now have this on-screen widget that we can sort of have some fun playing around with. Well, what this view does is it basically splits the screen in two. Now, what's important to keep in mind with this mode, as well as the next mode I'm gonna show you, is that this is strictly a viewport change, meaning we're not adjusting anything in the timeline, it's only for you to see visually. So let me show you what I mean. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these versions, doesn't matter which one, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna drag it and drop it over here onto the right hand side. Now, as soon as I do, you will notice that it updates immediately and is now ready for me to get in and compare. So all I have to do is simply drag the mouse right over the on-screen widget and I can adjust the viewport to see whatever I wanna see. We can even get in and rotate it and if you take a look at the top of the screen, you'll see that we actually have the physical parameters that we can get in and adjust absolutely. The wipe, rotate, and even the transition from one to the other. Now we do also have the ability to check the A over B like such, but in most cases I'm only using this as a comparison. And of course, if we come back and hit the space bar, you'll see that we can get playback. Now what's important to keep in mind is I'm trying to play this off a USB 2 keyboard. I'm actually getting pretty good playback and you can actually adjust this as it plays. You'll see pretty dynamic as it's going here. All right, now I'm just gonna stop this for one second because what you might think is that you're gonna take one of these other views and you're gonna take it and drop it on the left-hand side, but you'll notice it doesn't work. We can only apply our different views or in this case, I'm actually applying my different versions or I could take a completely different shot altogether and stick it in the right hand side. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna come down to import. I'm gonna come down to my bookmarks. I'm just gonna pick any shot here. It doesn't really matter which one. Let's pick our friend the bear. I'm gonna take the bear, simply drop it in the right hand side, and I'm gonna come back and hit play. Now, what's actually very cool about what's happened is that it throws some people for a bit of a loop. But what happens is that if I come back and I hit play, you'll notice that the shot is frozen and it's not moving. And then once we get down towards the end, the shot's gonna start playing. Well, what exactly has happened? Well, what's important to keep in mind is that the location where it starts playing is where our timeline was paused at when I took the shot and brought it in. So for example, if I wanted this shot to come in right at the beginning, all I would do is simply import it, make sure I'm at the top of the shot, drop it in, hit play, and you'll now see that we get playback of both shots at the same time to compare. And where this actually gets very interesting is you could technically queue up two takes of the same shot. You could queue them up left and right. You could even get in and adjust the transition between the two of them to see exactly what's going on and get a good idea of what might be slightly different from take to take so that you can get in and recommend a best take if necessary. Okay. Let's move on. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to navigate right over here. We're going to turn off toggle over mode. And I'm now going to come in and turn on the toggle dual view mode. Now this is the one that's very cool. And you can see that I've actually been playing around with it just a little bit. And I'm going to get things back to the way that they were before. 
Now, I'm going to link that back up again. You'll see what this mode gives us the ability to do is to have two images, whether they're the same image, whether they're versions of each other, or whether they're completely different images on the screen at the same time. Now, for the purpose of what we're doing, I'm actually just going to jump back to the beginning of this shot, and I'm going to take one of the versions that I created. Let's actually take a different one. Let's take this version, and I'm going to drop it down over here on the right-hand side. Now, what's going to happen if I hold Option or Alt is that if I zoom in, it doesn't matter which side I'm on, you'll notice that the windows behave the same no matter what I'm doing. Okay, if I get in, I start moving stuff around, they're going to move together. Now, you'll see where the center divider is basically right up here, up in the middle. Now, let me just reposition that back out because what I also have the ability to do that's very cool is I can come in and I can turn Link off. Now what I have the ability to do is to have these windows act independently of each other. So for example, let's say, I don't know, we had some frogs jumping around and they were being merry in here. So let's zoom in right here. And what I'm going to do is just reposition this shot over here because maybe I need to see what's going on on both of these at the same time. I can now come back, hit play, and I can see the stream on one side, the version zoomed down on the other. And even if I was to take this shot and drop it in there, you'll see, boom, drag and drop, lightning quick, drop it in. I could now even link this if I wanted to now zoom back or zoom in even more. And you'll see the versatility we have in this mode right here. Very quick, very easy. You'll see now we've jumped onto the next shot. And because the right monitor is just a version of what's going on on the left monitor, or the left side of the display, of course, when we get to the end of the shot, it will pause itself. All right. Now, the next thing that I want to point out is I want to talk about this little tool right here in the middle of the screen. What this tool is, is it's the dual view slip control tool. And what you can do is you can set and adjust a slip between the two views. Now, what the heck does that even mean? Well, let me show you. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to reset everything right back here as far as our viewports go. And what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to bring back in my friend Bob the Bear. We're going to put Bob the Bear on the right-hand side. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that Bob the Bear, of course, is going to be dropped in exactly where this shot started. All right? If I come back here towards the beginning of the shot, you'll see I can come back, hit play. Bob doesn't start playing until I actually had him come in. But I know that the slip on this shot was 720 frames. How do I know this? Well, if I go back to the start of this shot, you'll see that we're actually parked right down here on 720 frames. So if I want my friend Bob the Bear to start playing exactly when this shot starts, what I can do is I can come in and I can either punch in the absolute value. We can clear this of minus 720. And now when I hit play, Bob will start playing, or we can adjust it dynamically like such. You'll see, there we go. Okay, you'll notice that as I get past the time bar, Bob freezes because maybe I want Bob to start a little bit later. Or maybe I want to come back to the beginning of this shot right here, and let's just punch in our value here. Again, absolute minus 720. Maybe I don't want Bob to play at all. So what I can actually do is I can turn Bob's slip tool off, and Bob will sit here paused. Okay, now if I come back to the beginning of that shot again, and we swap this up, I can now hit play, and Bob will play, but the shot on the left side of the viewer won't play. This is actually a great way to get in. You can pause on a certain part of the shot, watch another shot back over and over and over again, if you need to make comparisons, whether you're on the set or whether you are in the edit room. Okay, so this tool, or actually these two tools, are actually fantastic, not only for working with things like versions, but also getting in and comparing different takes that might have slight variations to them, but you and the director, if they potentially are sitting beside you, might want to get in and quickly decide which take is the best one, and you can use one or both of these tools to do that dynamically. All right, I want to thank you for watching this great lesson on learning Assimilate Scratch. Now, don't forget to check us out on our different social channels, and if you missed our last lesson, you can simply click on it right here on the screen in front of you. Don't forget as well to hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, you can always send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com.